before I start, I just want to invite you to my Facebook coloring gallery and you'll find the link below. Welcome. Hi, it's Dia. Have you ever found a really cute picture that you want to color, but you've never colored anything like it? Maybe it's skin tone or hair or a person or leaves or even this little elf. You don't know how to go from point A to point B. Well, I have an idea. Actually, I've had this idea for a really long time and I always use it and I never thought until now, I don't know why, to put it in a video. So for this video, we're going to be coloring or I'm going to be showing you how to color this elf. Now this method can be applied to anything. So the first thing you do is look up the thing that you're going to be coloring. So I looked up elf and I gave that a thumbs down because that's not the kind of elf. So I looked up woodland elf with hat. I looked up gnome. I looked up a whole bunch of things until I found not the exact image, but an image that sort of had the colors and the idea and feel of what I wanted to recreate in this little picture. So I hooked up my computer to my printer and I printed out the image of the gnome. Now, as you can tell, the picture here and the picture that I printed out are quite different. My elf is young, this gnome is old, but the important things are the colors and the dimensions. So the first thing I did was pick out the pencils I wanted to use. In this case, I used Castle Art and Spira Farben pencils. Now the next step, I looked at the colors of the pencil and I tried to match the colors in the hat because I figured I would start with the hat. And it's actually kind of easy to do with, uh, with the lighter colors. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm testing out the color against the color that's already on the hat. Now that one's not quite perfect but in my humble opinion, it was close enough. And as you can see on these two hats here, there are very, there's a lot of variation. So this is a lighter orange. The first one was a, a sort of a reddish orange. The next one was a cantaloupe. So as I'm choosing the colors and going over the other colors that's already on the picture, I can see that this is going to work on my image. So I'm just collecting those colors because I know I'm going to be translating them and using them on my picture, meaning the uncolored image that I selected. Now you might be asking, those pictures are nothing alike. It's okay. I chose this picture because this gnome has a hat, he has clothes on, and I can use this method to make my little button fairy look not exactly like, but similar to the colors in this image. Don't worry if you choose a lot of colors because strangely enough, this hat looks red, but look at the color that I'm using now. It's a really dark brownish burgundy. And I'm not telling you specific names because you can do this with practically any set. So what I'm doing here is choosing the darker shadow colors now. And now I'm going to take the colors that I chose and I'm going to start coloring, looking at the other image and placing the colors that I matched onto this picture. I usually start with the lighter colors because it's much easier to go over lighter colors with darker colors versus going over dark colors with light. Now this is faster because I'm not really showing you any new fancy technique. I'm just showing you how I'm transferring the idea of the colors onto this image. So this color obviously matched the more orangey tangerine kind of colors in the first image. Now I'm going to leave an area going down the center of the hat 
uh, that area is going to be the lightest. I'm leaving it lighter in the center and it's going to get darker as it goes toward the edges. That will make the hat, the, the hat look 3D because dark recedes and light brings things forward. So if it's lighter in the middle and then slightly darker, darker, darker as it goes toward the edges, it's almost going to give it a cylindrical look which is exactly what we want for this hat. Now, if you want, if you're a beginner colorist or you just find it more comfortable, you can do one color at a time, meaning if you choose the first color in a specific area of the hat and it matches, you can go right over to the uncolored image and put that color down if that makes it easier for you and do one color at a time. I've done this so many times for so many things and not just for coloring, for um, regular art, for children's books. Because there are, I, we don't know how to color every single thing or draw every single thing in the world. So feel free to use a reference picture just like we did here. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later, meaning going from one section in the reference picture and going to the picture that you're coloring. So one step at a time. Um, it's actually kind of fun and you kind of get used to it. You can, you can get the hang of it. Um, and it helps you to actually learn how to draw these things and color these things. It sort of sticks in your head after a while and you figure it out. I think this is a fun method. Now what you see me doing is going back and forth with the same colors that I've already chosen. I darken up some areas. Certain things I think I have enough color and then I realize that I might not, so I go back and forth. Oh, that was me pointing in the direction that in my head I'm assuming the light source is from. So the shadows would be on the left hand side. Even that little pin would have a shadow because it's not sitting flush on the hat. And the further away the shadow is from the thing that is casting the shadow, for example, that pin, you can tell, well, not you can tell, it looks like the pin is sitting up away from the hat a little bit because the shadow is a little bit of a distance away from it. So now what I'm doing is just going over the outside edges and kind of trying to cover up the black a little bit make it look pretty. I'm going over certain areas with a deeper red and now I'm using a blender. Now I had a, a lot of um, layers here and I think this part's really fun when you can start to see all the layers come together and it looks so pretty. You can go right over those shadows too. It doesn't wreck it and make it all muddled up. It just looks so nice and the colors look brighter. If you were using white, meaning a white pencil, the colors would be softer. But this is, I love this, I love this and I'll put, I'll put all the links below to the pencils and the book. Uh, the book that this is from is Everyday Magic, one of my coloring books, but I'll put all the links below, including the colored pencils and this blender. And now that I have an idea of what it looks like all blended, I know that I want to add a little bit more red and make it a little bit more vibrant to make it look a little bit more like the reference picture. It might not be perfect, and that's perfectly okay. But you can see the colors are similar. You can make you can make it exactly the same. You 
can make it similar. So right there, I thought that that area was a little less accurate. So I matched. Oop, now here's that, here's that method that I was talking about before. I take a pencil and I actually color in the area just like I did before. That's a very light ivory. And then immediately after I do it on the reference picture, I do it on the picture that I'm coloring. And I kind of try to do it in a similar area. Then I switched it up to the slightly more pinky flesh kind of color. And I looked at the reference picture and I figured out where the slightly darker flesh color would be. And I started to color it on my image. The reference picture, the face is a little bit lighter right in the center and it seems to be a little bit darker around the edges. See? In certain areas you can almost see a brownish hue and that's a little bit darker once again and a little bit darker once again. So now I'm going to translate that into the picture too and try to put it into a similar area. Now sometimes you have to wing it because things aren't going to be exactly the same. The gnome in the reference picture has a big, big nose. He's got a beard and a mustache and my guy obviously does not. My guy also has bare feet and bare legs. So I'm going to try to translate those colors into this image. So what I did up there was make the perimeter slightly darker, meaning the edges of the face. I gave him little smiley lines under his eyes. So yeah, I went a little bit darker around the edges. So I did the same thing around the feet and the hands. Now I'm going to grab the Prismacolor Blender once again and just blend in the skin area. It's not, once again, it's not exactly the same, but I really like the way it looks. And this was just a matter of matching colored pencils from the reference picture to the picture that you're, that you're coloring. Oh, and I do want to say you, whoops, I'll hold that thought. So now we're going to go to, go to close. I don't know if I'm going to have exactly the same. So that color, uh, it was close, but not quite. That color was better. So I'm going to use this lilac -y purple on his shirt. And it's basically the same method. I start with the lighter color. And then I'm just going to go back and forth and color match. So if the edges of the shirt are a darker purple, sometimes it's harder to match exactly on top of a darker color. So you can either do it very close to that color or even around the, the edge of the picture because you can tell that way. And it's okay because it's a reference picture. You just printed it out. I'm just adding a little bit of doodles here. Um, so it kind of looks like he's got a sweater on. I'm looking for like a plummy purple because the edges of his shirt are quite dark. And I ended up using a little bit of a blue and a gray in there too, just to make it accurate for the video. And you can, you totally don't have to do it exactly. Once again, you can take it up, you know, take it to a point and then make details, make a design on the shirt, make a design on the hat, change the skin color, do whatever you like. Oh, there's an example of me going outside the line because that, that reference color was so dark I couldn't tell. 
and then I did a little bit on the outside and then I could tell and translated it right or transferred it right onto the shirt. So what I was going to say before is you can do this with any picture and it doesn't even have to be exact. It might take you a minute to find the reference picture that matches what you have in, in your head and you might even use more than one reference picture. Let's say I couldn't find a guy that had um, the color hat that matched the color shirt. You can you can go back and forth. It's kind of fun. I like to dig through the web to look for images, especially images of um, foliage. I love botanicals. Oh, I think we're going to go to the pants now. I decided for the sake of the video that I would pretty much copy the reference picture in colors as closely as I as I could. So our reference gnome has pants on. Our little guy has shorts. I even try to match the colors of the shadows because I feel that if you use black or gray exclusively for shadows, it can look a little flat. And I feel that, I mean, not that this is a realistic thing. This isn't, you know, this is a cartoonish kind of image, but there's something, there's something really pleasing about looking at a cartoonish or fantasy image and having some realism to it. So I try to match the shadows also because like on these on these pants, uh, the, the pants are like a funny goldenrod color and the shadow was like a darker brownish. So now I'm just kind of going back and forth and going over some areas that I think need some highlights. I just added a couple more shadows and there that was an example of a shadow that was a darker red. I'm blending in the shirt a little bit here. You know, basically I'm just fussing around. I decided that I was going to try to match even the hair. I don't want to make his hair too noticeable. I sort of wanted to leave him a toe head so I just added that golden color to the edges of his hair. I really like doing this because it takes a lot of the pressure off and I know in a lot of my videos I say oh just do it you know give it a whirl. I think that for some people that's not a fair statement because they're truly they don't know where to start so I thought that maybe this was a good springboard or a nice starting a nice starting place. I'm just, once again, I'm just fussing around. I'm just adding shadows. See right there? I saw that he had a shadow there. So I added the shadow on mine also. I made the shadows a little bit more intense. Sometimes when you add shadows to a color, the rest of the image, I'm sorry, when you add shadows to an image, it starts to stand out even more the rest of the colors look brighter. Now, sorry about that. The, the, <laughs> the sun sort of changed a little bit and started coming in and out of clouds. So, yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this and I had a lot of fun showing this to you too because I think that sometimes the things that I'm using to help I don't even think that it might help you. So I'm going to try to be more cognizant of that and maybe share those a little bit more. Now, I didn't use any reference pictures for the buttons because I've drawn and colored buttons many, many times. So I just sort of got it out of my head. I chose three or four aqua colors for that for that first button. Whoops, sorry about that. And... Uh, you can see on the inside of the buttons, I just, I, in those little holes, I kind of made it a little bit darker. 
and once again the darker part of the button is the shadow. So any place that would be elevated on the button has a darker area next to it. I thought that was a really pretty color, but I didn't think it was quite intense enough, so I tried it. I tried a darker color, and then I even went darker again. Nope, that didn't work either. I mean, it's fine, but once again, I think that light and dark and shadows can really make or break a picture. Well, not even break it, but make it a, a whole lot more appealing. Sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to work against the shadows that the sun is casting here. So I found a darker blue. And I also was going around the edges of the buttons because the buttons would be making shadows also. So I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope that you use reference pictures for other things too and print them out and use this method because it really is helpful and all of a sudden you'll start to realize that things that you were afraid to do before you're not so afraid to do and they become second nature. And I'm not sure I said this before but the image that I worked on today was from my latest coloring book called Everyday Magic and um, that's the book that has the uh, the bind o -matic top. It can be removed. You can choose a picture, take it out and work on it. And if you want, you can put it back in the book when you're done. And if, if you don't want to, you can just put the binding back together. I don't actually know if it's called bind o -matic, but it does go back together and I love it. So other people seem to like it too. So that's the Everyday Magic book, and that link will be below also, along with the pencils, the blenders, and everything else that I mentioned today. So once again, I hope this was helpful. I hope you liked the video. If you did, I hope you give me a thumbs up, maybe a share, maybe you can follow me. And this way you won't miss a thing if you hit the little button after you subscribe. So that's it for now. Look for the info in the info box below. And thanks for watching. I appreciate that you're here so much. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.